Okay, another very, very important uh, thing to understand is the 5G frame structure. Now, if we don't understand the 5G channels and what they do, uh, it's very difficult to understand all the other concepts that we have. So, um, let's go through that and uh, let's see how we can understand each of them. So, um, I have made a, a resource grid or a, f or a frame map over here. So, let's see one by one each of the channel and how it how it works out on a broad perspective we can say that this over here is uh, the downlink part and this over here is the uplink part so it's more like a tdd structure where we have four downlink slots and one uplink slot so it's more like a four ratio one so um, let's see uh, now how it works out this is the time domain this is the frequency domain so as you can see that each uh, let's say slot we have 14 symbols then 14 symbols again 14 symbols again 14 symbols here and 14 symbols here while this is the frequency domain you can consider it uh, resource blocks or a group of resource blocks because the frequency domain is not up to scale because uh, we cannot really uh, show that uh, in a slide but uh, consider it as a group of resource blocks so now uh, the first channel the mo first and foremost is called the primary sync signal now why is that the first and foremost because this is the first channel when the ue tries to access uh, the 5g cell it needs to read that uh, to have synchronization so it gives you the frequency of this uh, block as well and uh, it also starts giving you the um, part of the P pci which is the physical cell identifier the next thing that it needs to find out is the secondary sync signal. Now, you can say in this diagram, all of these yellow portions here, the yellow blocks, they indicate the secondary sync signal. And this is used for, um, also used for the RSRP, which is the coverage. So if the, uh, the UE needs to find out if the 5G coverage is good or bad, it needs to read this channel it needs to measure this channel's power basically this one also gives you the remaining part of the pci so when you have both pss and sss decoded that means you can find out your pci as well the physical cell identifier and also because both of them are one symbol apart so it they all when you know both of them together you can also find out your timing synchronization as well now, after that, the UE needs to know the MIB, the master information block, which is carried by this channel, PBCH, which is like a block over here, over here, and you can see all of them here. So the PBCH, it carries the master information block, the MIB, which carries the system frame number. It also carries some of the configuration of other channels like DMRS and PDCCH. So it's very important for the network entry as well. Now, as a whole, this whole PSS, SSS and PBCH together, they are called SSB, Synchronization Signal Block. This is a very important thing in 5G and uh, this one, the coverage of SSB actually, it, um, it can tell you what is your 5G access coverage. If you do not have a good coverage of SSB, that means you will not have good 5G coverage. If a user cannot decode this, the user cannot access the 5G cell. So that is why many of the, of the vendors, they, they use this in a beam sweeping way, which we will explain later in, in the later video, because this is a bit more um, um, complicated way and a more complex uh, theory behind that. Now, uh, let's look at the next thing that we need uh, for the network access and which is the another important channel and that is the PDCCH which is the physical downlink control channel. So, all these orange bars here, they are the PDCCH. PDCCH usually is in the first symbol, it can also be in the second symbol but many of the uh, vendor um, implementations only use it in the first symbol for now because we don't have that much of a uh, traffic uh, bottleneck on 5G right now. So what does PDCCH do? PDCCH tells the UE where its data is allocated. So for instance, if PDCCH um, if the UE reads PDCCH, it will know its data is allocated here or here or where its uplink data is allocated over here. So it needs to read the PDCCH to find out about its data allocation, for instance. 
and it also does other things like it can also tell you location of system information but uh, that we will also go through in later phases of the videos okay the next important thing is the pdsch which is physical downlink shared channel so all this blue portion is the data channel which carries traffic and that is the pdsch so that means the more blue b blocks we have that means more data we can carry that means more capacity we have that means more data rate and more throughput we can or more speed we can get on 5g so one of the important things to improve 5g capacity would be to increase the pdsch uh, data blocks or pdsch capacity okay another aspect would be the dmrs which is the demodulation reference signal they are part of they are embedded in the pdsch because the ue needs to use them to demodulate the pdsch as well so they work as the pilot signals that help the ue in decoding the pdsch as well <coughs> sorry okay the, the next one would be uh, that gap over here now when we have to shift from downlink to uplink we need to have a gap a gap means that where there is nothing transmitted so the g the g node b the 5g site can shift from transmitter to receiver mode and the ue the handset can uh, shift from receiver to transmitter mode so for that one we need a small gap after that uh, we put a couple of symbols for uh, uplink control or uplink reference signals which are also known as sounding reference signals these are used to estimate the uplink channel quality as well as the downlink channel quality because um, the SRS in t time domain uh, the channels are same in both downlink and uplink so they can also be used to estimate both downlink and uplink channel channel um, um, channel estimation and channel quality and then we have the physical uplink shared channel all of this green area is the PUSCH physical uplink shared channel which carries the uplink traffic so like in downlink we have the PDSCH which is the blue area in uplink we have this green area which is the PUSCH and more the PUSCH more the, P the capacity we have right similarly we have a random access channel this blue line over here this is the RAC channel which is used by the UE to send uh, uplink RAC preamble and that is used for uplink synchronization so as I, as I explained previously that the SSB the PSS the SSS they are used for downlink synchronization while RACH is used for uplink synchronization and then the last and I think one of the most important channels is the PUCCH physical uplink control channel now this one is uh, used to carry the control information uh, for instance if we send data in downlink we need to send its acknowledgements right so the acknowledgements are sent over PUSPUCCH this is over here <coughs> similarly if the UE needs to send data in uplink it needs to request the system that hey I have some data can I send it out for that one it needs to send a scheduling request which is also sent over PUCCH so PUCCH in that case is very very important channel so I think uh, if we understand all of this now then we have a basic understanding of the 5g frame structure and what each channel does and I think we can now move forward uh, to more complex and more um, the more intricate um, things that we need for instance the 5g capacity estimation and the 5g throughput uh, calculation and stuff like that okay so i hope you like this and uh, if you have any questions please comment and if you want me to cover any other topics please let me know as well if i have enough votes for that i will try to cover that as well and of course please do subscribe thank you so much have a nice day